Hey, it's Phil Torres here in the Amazon rainforest. And you know what? Today, I want to see some butterflies. Now, for most of us, we're used to seeing butterflies around flowers drinking nectar, right? Well, let me tell you, butterflies feed on all sorts of things, especially here in the jungle. Many of these things are very surprising. They pretty much all smell terrible, and some of them even get butterflies drunk. So I say we make it happen. Let's uh, go find some drunk butterflies, head out into the jungle. It's officially time for a butterfly adventure. Well, almost. First stop, a farm on the side of a river to collect the goods. These are good. So, some of these I'm gonna eat right now, but the rest, we're gonna let get real, real ripe. We're gonna stick them in a bucket, and that will be amazing for butterflies. Okay, now it is officially time for a butterfly adventure. We are on the Tambopata River, heading deep into the heart of the Amazon rainforest to a lodge called the Tambopata Research Center. This is protected Peruvian Amazon rainforest, teeming with wildlife. And with my bucket of bananas in hand, it's time to find a place to set some butterfly traps. I think this area's looking good. A Little bit of an opening in the rainforest. I know I've seen some really good butterflies right in this patch of forest when I've come here in the years prior. So now it's time to reveal what is in my bucket. It is, it is honestly kind of horrendous. Oh, it smells so bad. Come look, come look. This is like absolutely rotting, stinking, banana, which for a lot of butterflies here in the tropics is like one of their favorite things. So fruit eating butterflies is a really common term that entomologists will use because a lot of butterflies, especially in the tropics, like to eat fruit and especially fallen fruit like this because there's bacteria, there's fungus, all sorts of things are breaking down the fruit, making the nutrients inside easier to access. So this is highly fermented, smells terrible, and I think we're gonna get some really good butterflies. So now it's time to set up the trap. Okay, so this, ladies and gentlemen, is a butterfly bait trap. And the way it'll work is we will put the bait here in this dish, and then ideally butterflies will fly in, they will land on the dish, they will go up this inner funnel, and then they'll get stuck up here. Now this is a way to catch butterflies. We're not harming them, we're actually giving them a nice meal, and then when we come find them, we can open this up, again, grab them in a way that is safe for the butterflies. We can document them, we can get close, we can learn about these butterflies together, and all the ones that come to feed on this revoltingly gross rotten bananas. So let's get it set up. These bananas are, whew, let's just say, extra strong on the nose. We use a machete to slice and our hands to mash. The things you do for science, you know? Oh, okay, wonderful, wonderful. I'm gonna get some good butterflies. It'll all be worth it. Perfect. <laughs> yes. All right, now we wait. Already I'm seeing some flies come in, so clearly the smell is doing something. You hear that up there? It's the ugliest call in the world for one of the most beautiful birds in the world. Those are macaws. I think there's a nest right up there. I love this forest. All right, let's go set up another one. After setting up a couple more traps, the time is here to find out what we caught. And this one is a real Amazon beauty. Please cooperate. Ooh. Oh, I mean, come on, look at that color. Is that incredible or what? This butterfly is in the genus Panacea, known as the red flasher for a reason. Take a look at the underside of those wings. So take a look at its proboscis right here. So that right there is basically its straw that it uses to suck up all the juices 
including nectar. And there's an entire group of butterflies here that have essentially fruit piercing mouth parts. That's, you know, a lot of fruits have a thick skin so they can pierce right through it to drink the juices inside. Now, there's also a group of moths in another part of the world that originally had fruit piercing mouth parts. They could pierce through the skin of fruit, but eventually they evolved, they adapted, and they turned into, I kid you not, vampire moths. So there are moths out there that evolved because they were really good at piercing, you know, the skin of fruit to piercing the skin of mammals and drinking that blood. So I always like to imagine that a lot of these butterflies out here, maybe in 100,000 years or a million years, will evolve that same thing and you could be walking through here and butterflies will land on your face and try to drink your blood. But for now, they're just beautiful and like rotten fruit. So another thing to note, what happens when fruit ferments? Think about when grape ferments, we get wine. When potatoes ferment, you get vodka. When bananas ferment, we get an alcohol. So butterflies that drink on this for a long time actually get drunk and you'll see it in their behavior. They'll be a little lazier. They're easier to catch. They're kind of slow. So it's, um, we just caught this thing basically hanging out at the butterfly bar where it gets a lot of good nutrients, a little bit of alcohol. And so I think it made it a little bit easier to be able to hold on to it and grab it. Now, my tradition when you find a really beautiful butterfly like this is to try to put it on your nose and release it. So we're gonna try that. Ooh, look what we got. The banana has delivered today. This is such a cool butterfly. And we left this trap out overnight for this specific reason, because this butterfly is what's known as crepuscular, meaning it is active kind of as the sun goes down and early, early in the morning when it's kind of dark out. Look at this. This is the owl butterfly. Now it's called the owl butterfly because it has these two spots, these two false eye spots. And when you do that, what does it look like? Let's say that looks like an owl. False eye spots like this are really common in both butterflies and moths because it essentially confuses any predator coming in to try to eat them. So let's say a bird comes in to try to swoop, it's gonna see these eyes and think, hey, maybe that's the eye of a snake or a lizard or something, but it definitely would confuse them into thinking this is probably not a butterfly. And that's their escape plan is that hint of confusion gives them a chance to escape. Now, I'm so glad that we found this butterfly, but there's one other butterfly out here in the Amazon that loves eating rotten fruit that I really, really, really want to catch. But it's gonna take a little effort. What butterfly am I after? Well, you could call it the flash of the Amazon, both because of its speed and because of its dazzling color. The nearly impossible to catch butterfly is the blue morpho. And to get this one, we're trying a different technique. We're skipping the trap and just putting an open bucket of stinking bananas in a wide open area of the rainforest. A tree fall is a perfect spot for butterflies because it's kind of like a big rendezvous point. They like the sunshine. I'm already seeing a few flying around here. So I think it's a really good spot to leave the bucket and see if we can get some bigger species. Now, if this was human caused deforestation of a tree falling, sure that's something to be sad about in the Amazon. But tree falls are a completely natural part of the cycle in the Amazon. Almost every night, you will hear a giant crash of something this big falling down. And as you can see, it lets in all this new light and lets all these other trees grow. And you look at something like this, this could be, you know, this could be a 10 year old tree. Some of these small things you see around here have been waiting for their opportunity for a big neighbor to fall down, to let in the light, and then they grow to be a giant tree themselves. So we are gonna take advantage of the tree fall and get butterflies. Let's just say things got exciting very quickly and then frustrating just as quickly. We got a blue morpho. Yeah. Got a blue morpho. Oh, it's probably coming in to feed on the bucket. A blue morpho just came right here where the bucket was, probably to feed on the bucket. So had we come here two minutes later, macaws are screaming on my behalf. 
But when you're after Morpho. the flash of the Amazon, come in, you just come in, keep trying. I wish I brought my net extender. And then luck finally turned oh. in our favor. Yes! Ah! We finally got the blue morpho. Oh my gosh. It was around the bucket. We kind of snuck up on it, it flew off, and we snagged it. Woo! Oh, it is so pretty. What a cool butterfly. Wow, so. First, let me show you the underside. Nothing too exciting down here. In fact, it looks more like a leaf. Why? So it can blend into the forest floor when feeding on fallen, rotting. rotten fruit. But their tactic that kind of throws off predators with things trying to catch them is that they're only visible when they, boom, give you that flash. This to me represents the butterfly that ever since I was seven years old excited me to say, hey, maybe someday I could go to the Amazon rainforest and catch a blue morpho. So I'll tell you what, every time I get this close to the species, I'm, I'm thrilled because it's like, this is living my dream right now. It is amazing how something so beautiful can come from something so stinky and disgusting. But guess what, you guys? Banana, rotting banana, is not as gross as it gets when it comes to baiting butterflies. So in this battle of baiting butterflies, our next episode will be something even grosser, even stinkier. It doesn't come from the forest and the trees. It actually comes from the river and the lakes. Can you guess what it is? You have to wait and find out. And finally, thank you. It's been an adventure out here. And if you want to help this rainforest, here's two important things you can do. One is to buy Rainforest Alliance certified products. Look for this symbol on things ranging from coffee to chocolate. And secondly, visit this rainforest. And yes, I mean literally this rainforest. Go to rainforestexpeditions.com, check out their lodges. It's an amazing way for you to visit this area, get to understand the nature, the people, and put money right into this ecosystem and the community around it. You won't regret it.